Star quarterback Justin Herbert spoke publicly for the first time since the Chargers brought in Jim Harbaugh, and he said that he is fired up to play for his new head coach. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers now for eight years together. This is our sixth season as a host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you to the everydayers for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Well, Daniel, we finally got to hear from Justin Herbert about his new head coach, Jim Harbaugh, and it's safe to say that he's pretty excited to play for his new head coach, and the NFLPA report cards came out, and there's a couple of things that are completely inexcusable that have to be fixed, but there is some hope on the horizon because a new facility is about to be open, and I think a lot of, this, a lot of those things will be corrected. There's some really embarrassing things on there, truthfully, but uh, the good news is, is a lot of those should look a lot better, I think, in 2025 and going forward. But today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. David, Justin Herbert was seen for the first time publicly. I said seen. I mean, we heard from him, but I mean, he is not seen often. During the offseason, he was on there with on chasing it, the Chase Daniel podcast with Trey Wingo. And it was great to hear him sit down and have kind of an extended conversation because we just don't get much of that, even though we know he doesn't say much. But one thing he seemed most excited about, though, was his new coach saying that he is fired up that Jim Harbaugh is on town. He's ready to go play and said, who wouldn't want to go play for him? Absolutely right. I mean, this is the best head coach that Justin Herbert has ever had the opportunity to play for. Feel like you have somebody that's on his level uh, as far as that talent. Uh, like you said a couple of shows ago uh, when Jim Harbaugh was actually hired, you feel like you finally have a coach that's worthy to be able to coach a, a player of Justin Herbert's stature. So bringing that into the building I mean, he's got to be excited. Who wouldn't be excited to have somebody with that winning pedigree as your new head coach? Yeah, I guess one of the only bad things he said on the podcast is he was giving some credence to wins being a quarterback staff. But that's pretty, you know, Justin Herbert like because for him, it's always, you know, give credit to everyone else and then take the blame for everyone else. If that's why you're losing, if you're saying it's not a quarterback stat in that point and being him in that position, it's going to seem like you're saying, hey, yeah, you're right. It wasn't my fault. It was because the guys were dropping balls. And things like that. But the first thing I thought of when I heard Justin Herbert say that he's fired up for Jim Harbaugh was, you're not as fired up as I am. I mean, that's truthfully Absolutely what I thought. Not. Because, man, <laughs> I am fired up about it. I, I just think that I'm it stoked. feels like one of those combinations that could change the trajectory of a franchise. And we've talked about it over and over again. But to me, the one thing Justin Herbert didn't have was the winning, right? Everything yeah. else, the statistics, the awards, the records, he has those in his belt. The one thing he doesn't have is a playoff win and just, you know, consistently having winning seasons. And so the haters can shut their mouths. Of course it's that. But just giving, like, if you're talking about who could you take, right, to, to bring in. I mean, bring in the guy that has, like, the highest active, you know, win percentage in the NFL right now as soon as he steps right back now. into it, right? Like, <laughs> better than even Bill Belichick's and guys like that because Jim Harbaugh, all he does is win. And that's all Justin Herbert hasn't been able to do. And it just feels like when you pair those two things together, we could be in for something really special. But yes. one of the things that he seemed even more excited about, honestly, than Jim Harbaugh coming to town was Shane Day coming back to town, David. I mean, the way he talked about Shane Day, I mean, you know, even with Chase Daniel there, both those guys shared that QB room with Shane Day when he was the quarterback's coach previously. But man, he was so effusive. You don't hear him kind of light up about people like that very often, especially coaches. And he gave him some high praise. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, that entire interview, the only thing that he was super excited about and couldn't really control himself was the fact that Shane Day was coming back to be his quarterback coach. He said that Shane Day was one of his favorite coaches of all time. Yeah. And you're not going to sit here and tell me that he did not have direct, uh, like direct connection to bringing Shane Day back 
as the quarterback's coach. There's and no way. And we should way. say that he was asked about it, and he deliberately Come, ignored that part of the question. Of course, just like Justin Herbert would. He's never right. going to admit that, but there's no way in God's green earth that he did not go up to the Chargers' ownership and be like, hey, since we're making all these other moves, why don't you go and get my quarterback's coach back, the guy I want, the guy that made me comfortable, and when your $262 million quarterback says, I want a coach, you go get him, and that call it a day, and it's uh, safe to say he's very, very happy to have his quarterback's coach back. Yeah, I also said, so to have a guy like that in your corner to fight for you and to teach you and to help you grow, you know there's no one better than that. So I don't know if, you know, it was, hey, go get my quarterback coach, Shane Day, but I do think if he was approached about it, right, and there's a handful of names, it, it seems like something that even someone like Justin Herbert, who doesn't speak out about much and kind of goes with the flow, would say, hey, this is the guy I would prefer because out of all the coaches and the connections that are out there, Shane Day has about the least of them, right? Shane Day is kind yeah. of a black sheep in this coaching staff <laughs> revamp, and it's because of how he you know, relates and, and what he was able to get out of Justin Herbert in 2021, which was his best season right? Yeah. ever. So I, I, hearing him being that excited about makes me excited. Shane Day is also super excited to coach Justin Herbert, and I always think of just the all-in where Shane Day going into the folder on his computer. He says, hey, when I have a bad day, I have a folder on my computer that says, this is why Justin Herbert is the best quarterback of all time. And it's just like 75 Justin Herbert throws, right? So That'll make me feel not, better. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's not a bad strategy. But I also thought it was interesting what he had to say about being a leader because Chase Daniel gave him credit in the interview for becoming a more vocal leader. And I think we saw little snippets of it last year, whether it's, you know, spiking a ball at Will Clapp or being more kind of face-to-face -face and trying to correct people when they don't run the right, right route or whatever that may be, guys missing protections and things like that. But it was interesting to hear him say, David, that he does think he's done a good job of it, but knows that there's some room to grow. Yeah, he said, I think that's one of those things that you can always work on. You can keep building on that each year. I think I've done a good job of that, but I also have a lot of room for improvement. There's one of those things that in the offseason that we're going to take control of as soon as we get to OTAs, we're going to do things a little bit differently. And uh, I mean, I think that's one of the only things that uh, I I think are missing from Justin Herbert's game is just being a little bit more demonstrative, being uh, showing a little bit more emotion, being more in your face, being more vocal. And I, I really think it would be interesting to watch that. I mean, watch him play with that swagger that matches that unbelievable talent that we all know that he has. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that can really bring out a new different level to Justin Herbert. And I hope that Jim Harbaugh is the guy that's able to draw that out of him. Yeah. And that's the hard part that you don't know is just, is Jim Harbaugh going to ask something differently than maybe an Anthony Lynn did or a Brandon Staley did in the past? Is he going to try to push those buttons more? Because Undoubtedly this, David, I mean, we talked about how you change the culture and how that new culture can help you on and off the field. But the biggest thing that we talked about with that, accountability, right? Yeah. If you're talking about accountability, the number one person, right, the highest person on the highest rung is Justin Herbert. So if yeah. Justin Herbert isn't holding people accountable, that's going to have a trickle down effect. So part of that change in the culture, part of having more accountability inside your locker room and inside this organization is going to have to be Justin Herbert being there and setting the bar to some extent, right? It doesn't mean that yeah. he's going to be yelling and super demonstrative and, you know, grittying when he runs right. in a touchdown, right? But <laughs> what it could mean, though, is just listen, sit Justin Herbert down. When you talk, the players listen, right? Yeah. Look at the Jerry Tillery hit, right? And how much that team responded to somebody yeah. hitting their quarterback late. Like, these dudes know how good Justin Herbert is. These dudes will follow him anywhere, and he's not saying anything. But if he actually wanted to, he could steer them kind of whatever direction I think he wanted them to go. To so be a more vocal leader, it's impossible to kind of quantify how much of a difference that can make. Right. But it's, it, to me, very, very clear that if he wanted to be a more vocal leader and he wanted different things to be done and he's saying, hey, we have to do things differently here because it wasn't good enough before, the players will follow him there. Yeah, but they're going to hear that. There's a lot that needs to change around the Chargers, and Justin Herbert can only do so much, especially after the NFLPA, the NFL Players Union, ended up bringing their report cards out. And I think that we thought maybe the Chargers would have been shamed into improving some things last year after they got reamed by the report cards. But certain things haven't changed. And there's a lot of reason to think it could get better, but there are certain things that even with the new facilities aren't going to get fixed unless the Chargers just put their money where their mouths are. So we're going to get into that coming up right after this. 
First, though, I do need to tell you guys that this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. What's the right amount of socializing for you, and how do you recharge? Maybe you thrive around people, or maybe you need some more alone time. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. I'm going through this really hard right now because... I'm having a baby in less than two months, so a lot of people want to hang out and keep those kind of relationships going, and I feel the pressure, but I have so much, you know, crib building and bassinet building to do, so I'm having a hard time with that. Having therapy, giving someone, getting an unbiased opinion is very, very helpful. So if you guys are thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off that first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. David, the NFLPA did something new last year when they ended up doing an anonymous survey of the teams in the NFL and ranking them against each other as far as equipment, as far as coaching and ownership and diet and how they treat players' families. And all those things. And we ripped the Chargers for it last year. But we also knew, hey, new facilities are on the way. It's going to change a lot of it. And we saw instant reaction by the Chargers last year. Last year, right, their training staff got ripped. And they replaced their training staff, right? And then somehow it got worse in this year's report card. But, David, once again this year, they are flying very, very low on the report cards. They ranked 30th in the NFL of how basically they treat their players. Whether it's treatment of facilities, D-, minus food, F weight room C minus training. I mean, it, it's, it goes on and on. I mean, training room D plus weight room D plus team travel D minus ownership C plus strength coaches C plus locker room F food and cafeteria F like no matter where you look on here, it's all bad. And there's certain things they have more control over than others as their new facilities are built. But this is just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to see this and see your team at the bottom of the league. It's horrible. I mean, it, it is an embarrassment. It, it's something that you look at and you're like, how is this happening in, in, in the year of our Lord 2024? I, I don't understand. Like a lot of these things are are things that have no like bearing on the salary cap. These are things that right. you, if you just put the money up, that these things can get corrected. And yeah, yeah. a lot of these things are going to get fixed when the new facility opens up here, you know, pr probably right around training camp. But that doesn't matter. Some of these other things that are on here should never, ever be on here for a multi-billion dollar corporation we're talking Espe about here with the chargers especially when you're talking about you're getting compared to your peers so this isn't just you based on another workplace this is you based on other teams so when teams are potentially making their free agency decisions and things like that and it's close this definitely is something i would look at if i was one of the players for sure yeah. and maybe you can be the chiefs and you can be 31st in these rankings but you have super bowls to allure people right yeah you have patrick Mahomes and andy reed to allure people the Chargers need these things to be better if they want to close the gap with a team like the Chiefs. And it's hard to imagine you're getting the best from these players if you're not giving the best to them, right? And the treatments of families is something that I know you were fired up about because when you get an F in the treatment of these players' families and you're ranking as low as you do in the league, telling me that, right, if you're looking at treatment of families, you're 27th in the NFL at taking care of your players' families. That bothers me. It, it, it bothers me to no end because this is something that you can control. It is in your full control. It's just a money thing, pretty much. It's just a money thing. And and this is what really, really grinded my gears here. They said they provide daycare, but not on site, and players have to pay. The team charges 75 for the first child and $50 for each additional child, child per family. A major complaint from players is that the daycare is not convenient for the families to use and that the team charges players unlike most of the teams in the NFL. How yeah. does this happen? This is completely, it's almost sickening to me, honestly. Yeah. You're talking about the family members of your employees, your players. I know when my family is not taken care of, I'm not happy. I'm not yeah. feeling good. I'm not going to go to work focused, feeling like my family is taken care of because when you have family issues, that controls everything that your mind is thinking about. You want that to be taken care of. You want that to be completely the last thing on your mind so that you can show up to work and go give your best and not have to worry about that element. This is something that needs to get corrected yesterday. This should never, ever, ever be a problem for a NFL franchise 
that literally gets TV money every single year yeah. just for being an active team in the NFL. This is embarrassing. It should never happen again. It is, yeah, and it could have already stopped, right? I wonder if they had put the specific numbers out there last year because it didn't have that specific little thing as part of it as far as the money and things like that. I know what people were thinking. Hey, these are professional athletes. They can pay, but all those salaries aren't created equal, right? Like you have, you right. know, practice squad guys, and, you know, guys at the bottom of the yeah, depth chart that aren't making those, right? Yeah. yeah, and then they're using a few, you know, maybe thousands of dollars a week on child care when you could have stopped charging them already. Like that's your decision. You could decide to foot the bill for it right now. If you want to take care of the players and you're saying that 26 teams in the NFL are taking care of their players' families better than you, that's just embarrassing, right? And the other thing to me as something I hoped would get better and will improve some with the new facilities was the food. Like, what is happening? I have WTF is happening with this food. The Chargers ranked 32nd in food freshness and 32nd in food taste, right? I understand the new facilities going to have a new cafeteria and all of those things, but like, how, like, what are you doing? Like the quality of you're giving NFL players right for their food is the worst in the league. Like that's something you ranked really, really poorly at last year. You could have changed in between now and then, and you just didn't. This isn't rocket science. Like it's really not. It's so easy to be like, Hey, Mr. Player, what kind of food do you like? Yeah. Um, what, kind, what, where would you like me to get this from? It's just what fun. are the things that you want? What do you want? Just tell me. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Let me go fix it right now. Let me go get you the chef. Let me go get you what the type of foods that you want. That's going to make you a better athlete. That's going to make you perform better. This is a controllable, like we're yeah. talking about food here. I mean, food for professional athletes is literally fuel. Yeah. You need to fuel the body properly so that they can go out there and perform their best. This is not something that we should be talking about for a professional sports franchise at any level. I mean, I guarantee you there are college programs out there that feed their athletes better than the Chargers have fed their athletes. I mean, oh, and it's not not yeah. even close. No. So to sit here and have to be talking about something like this, something that should be like a guarantee. It should be something that you shouldn't even give a second thought to. Especially after you already got shamed for it. Like yeah. this was and the same ripped, last year. You, you got ripped last year and you just said, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's exactly what this report indicates to me is that you saw it, you know that it was put out there and you did absolutely nothing about it, meaning you don't care. And yeah. why would a free agent that is going to come and potentially be a member of your franchise look at this and say, oh, I'm going to come here for sure. They're going to take good care of me. Uh-uh, absolutely not. Yeah, and, and they are in temporary facilities, right? So it's like sure. this is something that should be better. If you have a cafeteria and all of those things, maybe they don't have the space to, you know, store as many fresh items and stuff like that, you know, or have enough, like, you know, space to have actual real cooks go in there and cook kind of, you know, the level of food they need to have either way. So it could be better. At the same time, after seeing it last year and seeing it be even worse than it was last year, I 100% thought that they would be shamed into serving better food since the last one came out. Have you but ever heard of catering? Like, it, come it, on. Yeah, and the thing is, look, I'm going to give the Spanos, Spanos credit, right? Like, they have been way less cheap this offseason, right, and with building new facilities than Definitely. we've ever seen them. They've come a long ways in that regard, right? But at the same time, like, these are the things that you're hoping Jim Harbaugh talked about, you know, when he was getting this job. Like, hey, I need all these things to happen. And I think back to Ben Herbert, the story we told about him and why he was the X factor for Michigan was just he had two plants in his office. One, he fed beer and really, you know, Doritos and things like that. And the other one, he fed miracle Grow, and it grew like crazy. And the other one sat there dying and smelled bad and all those things. Ben Herbert, as the new director of player performance, Part of that performance is what you're putting into your body. I have to think that's going to be a big sticking point for him, making sure these players have what they need to be able to train and develop and do all the things they and need. And you don't to want do. to say no to that guy because that guy no. will haunt your nightmares. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't see John Spanos, you know, wanting to pick any fights uh, with Ben Herbert with the way that dude looks. But the team travel was also super heavily credit criticized. Basically. A lot of teams in the NFL send their equipment beforehand to the places that they're going to play so the players don't have to share the plane with all their equipment and stuff like that. That's a big part of it. They don't have to have roommates, so that part's not too bad. But only 55% of the players felt like they had comfortable amount of personal space during their flight. So, yeah, that's something, you know, probably shouldn't make too much of a difference, but they're still just lagging as far as where the yeah, rest of the They just don't want to wait has. on the tarmac. They, where when the, they arrive, yeah. they want to get off the plane. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, they want to be able to go do what they need to do, get the rest they need to get 
to go and do a hard thing, which is playing on the road in the NFL. But the good news is, is, hey, you know, we ripped them. They deserved it. But there's a lot of reason to think things are going to get better. The new facilities are coming. Ben Herbert is in town. And so is Jim Harbaugh, which I'd have to think is going to raise how they feel about their head coach. So we're going to talk about that and more on today's Locked on Chargers podcast. First, though, I need to tell you guys to get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. And also, March Madness is right around the corner, so things are about to get hectic. One of the best sporting weekends of all time, one of the best betting weekends of all time. And if you're missing out on football, the good news is the odds for the 2025 champion are already out and the Chargers are plus 3,000. They have the 12th best odds. It'll be interesting to see if that moves at all. And the favorite right now is the 49ers, not the Chiefs. So I like that. But if you guys want to get on the action, just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. David, I want to get to the good side and the reason for hope and the reason for optimism and the reason to think that this list is going to be much better. The grades are going to be much better in 2025 with the new facilities opening up and so much more happening. But I do want to thank everyone for checking out today's show. We love the everydayers out there. Thank you for making us your first lesson. And also make sure you guys are checking out the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today, giving you expert analysis from all the sports all over the country from local experts who know their team inside and out. Make sure you go subscribe to Locked On Sports Today. Dave, there's a lot of reason for hope in this, right? We got upset. Those things, you know, could have been changed already even before the new facilities. But the fact is, the new facilities are going to fix a lot of these things. So I do think that is going to be one of the big X factors and one of the big edges the Chargers are given this year is when they are getting ready for this upcoming season, they're going to be doing it in a state-of-the-art facility and not a high school football field. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel like this was a big kind of, uh, you know, recruiting tool for Jim Harbaugh saying you know hey coach you know uh, you know we know you you know you're thinking about making that leap back to the nfl well we have a brand new state-of-the-art facility that's going to turn into your new office uh, yeah. and hopefully you know for the last time you know that you can retire uh in the nfl as the chargers head coach because we have everything that you're ever going to need to be able to get the most out of these players and go win us a championship yeah, and I mean, if you just look through the things they got graded really poorly on, right? 44% of players felt like they didn't have enough hot tub space. 56% didn't feel like they had enough cold tub space. Like, these are things from a training staff perspective that are going to be a lot better. They ranked 30th and 31st in those. Those are going to be a better. They ranked 27th in players' feelings about their training staffs and how they contribute to their success. I have to think that with Ben Herbert being what he is now, the director of player performance, he is going to have you know, and want new training staff in. You're probably not going to hear about those hires and things like yeah. that, though. 16% of the people felt like they didn't get enough one-on-one -on -one time with training staff as it is, which isn't good. Then only five other teams felt as poorly about their weight room as the Chargers did last year. So that's another thing where now they have a state-of-the-art weight room, right? Players felt like they didn't have enough space in the weight room before it ranked 30th. That's going to be solved now. The locker room was an F this year. That's going to be solved now. There's going to be a lot more space in there. So just with those things already, those are things kind of you go down this list and feel like, okay, these things are going to be better. They should be near the top of the league with this brand new facility opening. But I think maybe even more than just the new building, David, or the new people that are in the building and how much those people are going to affect it, especially with Ben Herbert. Because right now the Chargers rank 28th in their thoughts on the strength coaches for this team last year, which actually you know went down last year somehow. But Ben Herbert feels like he changes that. And I think the other big thing here, David, is just the staff that he has brought in has changed that, at least with the amount of people they're bringing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Ben Herbert was one of the only strength and conditioning coaches in college football to be making $1 million per year. And that was for a very, very good reason, because he was one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the entire country. You take that, you bring that level uh, attention to detail that he's going to bring to the table, literally covering every single aspect of being able to get the most out of these players, b being able to cultivate that competitive environment, uh, and to be able to just know that you're in the room with, with adults, with professionals that know exactly what to do and how to do it and how to get the most out of their players. That is what Ben Herbert brings to the table. And yes, this coaching staff right here, 
is probably one of the biggest coaching staffs I have ever seen the Chargers be able to assemble. There's yeah. going to, and, and a, a lot of it are guys that have connections to Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz and are all going to be reading off the same sheet of music and moving in the same direction. All of that, I think, uh, is going to lead to a more cohesive working environment and a more productive working environment. Yeah, and the thing is, the Chargers could have told Ben Herbert, okay, we'll hire you, but all you know, then we can find you kind of some cheaper people to kind of right. implement the way you want to run things now, right? Because after Anthony Lamondo, their last guy was hired, like you didn't see a bunch of guys following with him to kind of implement his regimen and things like that. Ben Herbert brought in four dudes to help yeah. him with that, right? He brought in basically co heads of strength and conditioning coaches with Jonathan Brooks and Devin Woodhouse. Ben Rabe, the director of performance analytics, Lincoln DeWolf, new performance analyst. All these people should be scanning all of these things. Are the players getting enough nutrition? Do they have the right equipment, right? Are they getting enough training? Are they able to get, you know, brought back and, and recover well enough yeah. with the staff that we have to go in here and give their all in the weight room, to give it all out there on the field? So I think that's a huge part of it. The Chargers before had a 27th in ranking and feeling their coaches contributed to their success. They rank 25th in players feeling like they have an individual plan. Ben Herbert had an, an individual plan for an entire college team, right? With oh, like a hundred players, players. <laughs> hundreds of players. Like yeah. it, it's crazy how big that team is when you look at everybody. That's part of it, right? And not only that, but he made it collaborative. He made it fun, and he made it a competition, yeah. right? To see who was going to gain the most, and everyone knew where everyone was at and knew what they had to do to go chase those people down, right? So I love yeah. his approach at Michigan. I love the fact, you know, because the thing is, is Michigan didn't have the best players. They didn't have a ton of five-star prospects. That's kind of one of the misconceptions. They've been consistently good, but they didn't have, you know, they're not at the top of the recruiting rankings, right? right? They had to get guys in the weight room. They had to develop them over two or three to four years and get the most out of the players they had out there. And they did it as well as anybody in the entire NCAA. And yep. now you're getting someone to come in and help you develop these players because that's so important. Like a huge part of player development is getting this part of it right and getting these players to where it needs to be. Like having someone like JT Woods look the way we saw him at the end of last year after what he looked like coming out of college, you thought that dude would be much more well put together, right? Would look much more like an NFL player by this point, right? But I just yeah. Chris Rumpf, another one, right? Their yeah. frames don't always support those kind of things, but you just thought it would look better at this point, right? I agree. Another thing I think would get a lot better is the head coaching rankings. I think that one is going to go up. Chargers ranked 23rd in their belief in their head coach. They ranked 16th in how much willingness they had and uh, how much willingness Brandon Staley had to listen to the locker room. So 16th, you know, half and half. Very interesting to see, David, how much this one goes up because we have heard that Jim Harbaugh does rub people the wrong way sometimes. So I want to think this is going to go way up. I think it will. Yeah, I mean, say what you want about people saying that, you know, Jim Harbaugh rubs people the wrong way, but I haven't really heard any of his former players say that or or any of the his Michigan football players say that or any of his San Francisco or any other stop. I haven't heard any of the players echo there's, any there's of There's been a sentiments. couple of old players that haven't necessarily said, hey, I didn't like him, but I know there were guys who didn't like him, right? But I think the consensus, like Joe Staley, his former offensive yeah. lineman, came out and, and kind of started this whole thing about him rubbing people the wrong way. Yeah, but th at the end of the day, you know what's going to make everybody feel better? Winning. And the yeah. Chargers haven't done enough of that. And when you're winning everything is better everything tastes better everything feels better everything is better and i think that's the one thing first and foremost that jim harbaugh is going to bring to the table and that is going to in within itself change the way people feel about the head coach i think it's going to get better i, I think the thing about jim harbaugh too that might be underrated is his players love him and, and you know the for the vast majority you're hearing people say i'd run through a wall for that guy yeah the coaches love him. His yeah. coaches love him. They yes. know he's invested in them. And I think that's such an underrated part of having these discussions is how much do the players like him. We're talking about a dude in Brandon Steele who was getting yelled at by his linebacker coach that he's calling stupid plays in a playoff game that was a historic blown lead. Ugh. Doesn't feel like that happens under Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh's coaches know that he wants what's best for them. He knows that he sees something in them. And if they stick around him, they're going to go on to do much better things as someone like Mike McDonald, right? Absolutely. And all the other guys who he's believed in and given chances to on this all-star staff that he's put together. But that is going to wrap things up for today's show. I do think these reports will be much better in 2025, and I think they need it to be if they want to close the gap and get the most out of these players. But that's going to do it for today. Make sure you're back here tomorrow because we have a little bit of a crossover edition. We have not only Fan Mail Friday tomorrow, 
but also free agency Friday, looking at the top running backs we would want in this upcoming free agency class and also getting into your guys' questions since we didn't get to them today. So if you guys want to hit us up, hit us up at Locked on LAC. We'll put a post out there. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogemeyer at Drotalk SD. You guys find us on Instagram at Locked on Chargers and our Locked on Chargers Facebook page. If you want to call into the number, like a tier and get on the Chargers voicemail line and do it like an old school sports radio call. Leave a 30 second Chargers question. You can do that at 323-524-7924. But free agency Friday, fan mail Friday coming to you soon. Make sure you guys don't miss it. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.